Hi, kumusta? Welcome back to our channel. Kung saan sa channel nito ang nakapitin ni Asin ay napakisipin sa lahat. Hello, kumusta? I'm back with a new topic. And sa pagbabalik ko na ito, meron akong mga bagong kaibigan na nakilala through my uh, post for this uh, YouTube channel. And shout out lang din dito sa aking mga kakilala na ito. And they are coming from Visayas and Mindanao. So, hello Mitz. Uh, she's from Cebu. <laughs> and hello din kay Michael uh, from Mindanao. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and for watching my videos. Uh, actually, maraming ibang mga kahit senior high school na nagtatanong sa akin and even college students because of my invitation to watch my video and if there are any questions, I'd like to answer as much as possible. But gusto ko lang ano, na klaruhin, huwag sana kayong ma... Uh, huwag sanang sasama yung loob ninyo kung hindi lahat eh masasagot ko because as much as possible I would like to answer only those that are within my scope of profession. Uh, meron kasi mga nagtatanong ng other accounting topics, accounting questions. Unfortunately uh, hindi ko kayang masagot lahat. Matagal na rin kasi ako wala sa college and limited lang yung mga loads na binibigay sa akin sa aking part-time profession sa pagtuturo. So, I can only address doon yung mga questions na within that scope. Okay? But I'll try to answer you as much, uh, as much as I can kung kaya ko, kung alam ko pa yung topics na yon, And I'll get back to you. Sa aking mga bagong viewers, maraming salamat. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell para updated kayo kapag may mga bago akong uploads. Okay? Meron tayong bagong topic sa ngayon and it's all about elements of the financial statement. Statements. I purposely skip yung fundamental concepts or yung mga underlying assumptions regarding uh, accounting information or the financial statements. Uh, let me see if we can incorporate it in some other topics. Pero kung hindi man, uh, I will provide you with a separate session para doon. Okay? And now, Proceed muna tayo dito sa topic natin which are which is the element of elements of the financial statements. So, warning lang, huwag kayong ma-overwhelm sa figures na nakikita ninyo sa aking screen. <laughs> okay? Uh, baka matakot agad kayo at mag-back out na kayo bigla sa accounting, especially doon sa mga senior high school or doon sa mga first year na nagte-take up ng accountancy program. O kaya naman doon sa ibang mga business administration uh, students na merong accounting subject as part of their uh, course curriculum. And remember that accounting, even the basic accounting, is a major subject in uh, all of the courses. Okay, but we will try to uh, discuss the elements in details. Himayin natin kung ano-ano nga ba ito. Okay, now... Uh, to proceed, recap lamang po tayo doon sa napag-usapan natin during episodes 3 to 5 when we define what accounting is. Remember kasi that accounting is a service activity, that accounting is a process, and accounting is an art. And when we try to incorporate all those definitions, accounting is a process of identifying ano, transactions and recording them para makapag-provide eventually ng mga records na relevant for decision making. Now, if you are familiar with the IPO model, okay, uh, usually in data processing, um, we can apply this kasi in accounting. And because accounting is an art of recording and there are datas involved, data involved, so we are also processing financial information. Yung, yung IPO model kasi, ang tawag natin data is the Input Process Output. Okay, yun yung acronym ng um, IPO. Uh, applying yung IPO model sa accounting, okay, when we are talking about the input, ito yung pag-identify natin, pag-record natin ng mga financial transactions. Para kasi makapag-sukat ka, makapag-record ka, mailagay mo ito sa mga accounting books mo, um, kailangan natin ng mga source documents. Okay? 
So, so yung mga source documents na ito, uh, maaring ito yung mga invoice, yung mga receipts, mga billing statements, and other forms of um, official documents na mag-recognize natin as accountable transactions. Now, when we record this financial transaction, we record natin ito sa mga accounting systems. Okay? And dito, papasok yung pinatawag natin na uh, process part, yung process phase. Financial transactions are processed and summarized by an accounting system. Kapag maliliit na mga kumpanya ito, uh, pwedeng hindi, again ano, doon sa previous discussion ko, pwede kasi na manual and pwedeng electronic. Okay? So, pag manual, mga tindahan lang ito, mga sari-sari store at maliliit na tindahan. Pero pag i-organize natin, i-formalize natin yung bookkeeping, yung record keeping, either in the form of um, Excel, Microsoft Excel, or mga accounting systems na for small um, entities. Or pag medyo diverse na yung iyong transactions, pwede ka nang mag-employ ng mga SAP, um, Oracle, at iba-iba pang mga accounting system. Now, dito, sinasummarize natin ito para makapag-generate tayo ng output. And pagdating sa output, ito yung mga financial reports na nag-generate based from those um, records sa mga sinummarize ng mga accounting transactions. And it will be the basis para sa mga users para mag-decide kung ano yung course of action na kanilang kukunin. Kung ikaw ay isang investor na mumuhunan ka sa kumpanya na yun, ano, bibili ba ako ng stocks or Ibebenta ko ba yung aking stocks dahil palugi na ito? Kung ikaw yung supplier naman, o magdadagdag ba ako ng additional supplies? Kung alam ko na ito ay utang sa akin at kaya ba nitong bayaran ng kumpanya in the near future? So, those other decisions, okay? Now, etong mga reports na ito, no? yung financial statements, it is more of a summary. Okay? Summary figures. But pwede kasi natin itong ihimay, himayin. Ano ang kanilang basis? Saan sila nanggagaling? Dito papasok yung tinatawag nating mga elements of the financial statements. Okay. So pag elements kasi, di ba, ito yung basic unit. Remember kung meron kayong chemistry subject, okay? ito yung pinaka-fundamental na... Um, anyway, pinaka-basic unit, pinaka-primary unit. Ayoko magkamali, baka may masabi ako na mali pala dahil hindi ko naman na ito uh, profession. Okay? Now, ang um, elements of the financial statement, makakategorize natin ito into five and they are the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. Tagaya ng makikita ninyo sa screen. Hinati natin ito, the first three, yung ale, assets, liabilities, and equity. Ito yung bumubuo doon sa balance sheet. And related doon sa equity portion, ito yung tinatawag natin na income and expenses. Okay? So, maliwanag po tayo, no? Ito yung elements. Itong lima na ito. Although, marami pa itong mga classifications na ito. But they are the general classifications of the elements of your financial statements. Okay? Now, bear with me. Sundan nyo ako, ano? Dahil hihimayin pa natin ito kailangan natin i-discuss ano ang assets, ano ang liabilities, so on and so forth. Okay, but before we dwell with the definitions of these elements, bakit nga ba mahalaga na maintindihan natin itong mga different elements na ito ng financial statement? Why do we need to understand this one? Well, because they are the basic and the building blocks of your financial statements. And remember that accounting is about providing the right information para makapagbigay ng tamang desisyon yung mga users of the financial statements. So kung mali-mali yung classification mo, wala din. Magiging irrelevant, walang silbi yung financial reports na naiprovide mo doon sa mga users. Accounting is not all about figures. It is more of analyzing, analysis, providing the right um, information based on your uh, understanding of the nature of those transactions. So, naalala ko tuloy, marami kasing mga estudyante na nagtatanong, mahirap ba yung accounting? Is it all about math? Hindi po ito all about math. 
it is more of analysis. So, kailangan dito pa lamang sa fundamentals na ito, kung saan included yung elements of the financial statement, dapat malinis, malinaw yung pagkakaintindi ninyo. Okay? So, that's why this is a critical topic because ito yung mahalaga sa pag establish ng magandang um, understanding, especially for the higher accounting. So, pag-usapan natin kung ano muna yung assets. Okay? Now, from the definition, I'd, I'd like to read, assets are resources controlled by the entity as a result of a past event and from which a future economic benefit is expected to flow to the entity. And meron akong mga hinighlight na mga terms, mga phrases, para ma-emphasize natin ang definition ng asset. So, kung tatagalugin natin ito, ito raw ay mga ari-arian na kontrolado ng isang uh, kumpanya dahil sa mga previous na events o pangyayari and kung saan merong ina-expect ng mga future benefits, future economic benefits na papasok sa entity. Okay, now, pag-usapan natin yung una kong hinighlight, resource control. Pag sinabi kasi natin na controlled resources or yung yung power to control, ito yung ability na makapag-obtain tayo ng mga economic resources. Ma-enjoy natin yung paggamit nito and ma-limit or ma-restrict natin yung iba sa paggamit nitong mga resources na ito. Okay? And so this is yung definition ng resource control. Now, how about past event? Pag sinasabi kasi natin na past event, uh, hindi natin for for accounting purposes hindi natin pwedeng i-recognize ang isang asset on the basis of mere speculation medyo nag anticipate ka kailangan yung pangyayari na yon is in the past before natin mag-consider yung isang asset now dahil meron tayong resources na control arising from past event meron tayong ini-expect na future economic benefit and pag sinasabi natin na future economic benefit there is an expected value from the use of it in the future. So, halimbawa, uh, bumili ka ng mga office supplies. Inaasahan mo na yung mga supplies na ito, kagaya ng mga pan paper, mga gunting, mga stapler, at kung ano-ano pa man, magagamit mo ito eventually so, mga tra sa trabaho mo. Okay? So, meron tayong future economic benefit na in-expect na papasok doon sa ating company or doon sa ating uh, business organization. So, ito yung pinaka-definition ng assets. Pero, para mas maintindihan ninyo ito, pag sinasabi nating assets sa Tagalog, ito yung mga ari-arian mo. Basta meron kang pinanghawakan ng mga economic resources. Irrespective kung ito ay utang muna or binili mo ito gamit yung pera mo. Okay? So, just to give you an idea, ito yung ating mga common examples. So, you have your cash. You also have yung mga accounts receivables. Okay? Ito yung mga for collections. Nakapagbenta ka kasi pero utang mo na. So, meron kang pera na darating. You also have yung inventories. You have prepaid expenses. Meron kang mga office supplies, company properties, and general. So, hindi ito all-inclusive, no? This is just an example. Okay? Now, ano naman ang liabilities? Uh, define muna natin ito. Uh, when we talk about liabilities, these are present obligations of the entity arising from past event, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits. So, himayin natin ano, yung definition. Dahil meron ulit akong hinighlight dito. Let's first talk about the term the present obligation. So, pag pinag-uusapan kasi natin ay liability, it is an obligation. And when we are talking about obligation, it is something that you owe. Okay? Meron kang pinagkakautangan. And you are expected to settle or bayaran yung pinagkakautangan mo na ito. So, present obligation. May utang ka ngayon at ina-expect mo na bayaran ito in the future. Okay. Past event naman. When we are talking of past event, oh, i-mirror lang natin yung aking explanation doon sa asset. No? But we cannot recognize kasi a liability on the basis of mere speculation. 
So, dapat merong um, basis kaya ka nagkaroon ng utang. And the event must be passed before a liability can be considered. Okay. So, example, bakit ka may utang? Kasi, maaring nang hiram ka ng pera one month ago, kaya nagkaroon ka ng utang. Hindi naman pwede na nagkaroon ka bigla ng utang nang wala lang. Bigla na lang bumagsak galing sa langit <laughs> yung utang mo. Hindi naman pwede yon. O, yung last emphasis naman sa definition ng uh, liability is yung settlement na expected natin to result in an outflow from the entity of resources and by the economic benefits. Um, Siyempre, kapag kailangan mo nang bayaran ang utang mo, masisettle mo yung obligation na ito sa pamamagitan ng paglalabas mo ng resources. Pagbabayad mo ng pera o kaya kapalit ng ibang mga ari-arian. So, when you settle the liability, kapag binayaran mo na ang iyong utang, maglalabas ka ng panibagong resources. So, meron tayong outflow of economic resources. So, eto yung last na emphasis na gusto kong i-discuss about liabilities. Ano ang mga example ng liabilities? Meron akong dalawang chanekan dito ano, sa aking slide. Uh, sinabi ko sa una, all types of payables in general. And when we are talking about payables, lahat ng klase ng pinagkakautangan mo. Maring may utang ka sa supplier, may utang ka sa creditor, may utang ka sa may-ari ng kumpanya, may mga hindi ka pabayad na kailangan mong bayaran, whatever it is. Okay? They are liabilities. We also have yung tinatawag natin na unearned revenues. These are collections received in advance. I will have to discuss this um, item separately para hindi mo na kayo malito at hindi mo overwhelm yung inyong uh, isipan sa ating pinag-usapan sa ngayon. Oh, how about equity? Pag sinasabi naman nating equity, these are the owner's contributions. Ito yung mga ambag ng may-ari ng kumpanya. Okay? This is the residual interest. Assets minus liabilities. Now, sa susunod na episode, sa susunod na video, pag-uusapan natin yung accounting equation in details. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Pag nareshuffle natin yung equation, yung formula, assets minus liabilities equals equity. Kaya yung definition na ito. Okay? So this is the equity, the, well, the third element of your financial statement. Now, depending on the ownership of the business, it can be called as owner's equity. For a sole proprietor, it can be called as the partner's equity pagdating sa uh, partnership. And pagdating sa mga corporation, ang tawag naman natin dito, yung mga shareholders' equities. Yung mga common shares, mga preferred shares na tinatawag. So, eto yung ating equity. Although, hindi lamang yun ang nilalaman ng ating equity section. Especially pagdating sa mga corporations type of business. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin ang income and expenses. Subukan ko na maipaliwanag ito sa inyo ano, sa simpleng pamamaraan. Ang dalawang category kasi na ito ay nangyayari because of the operations of the business. Kapag ikaw ay nagbebenta, kapag ikaw ay mga ay may mga gastusin. At dahil sa mga transactions na ito, naapektuhan either yung asset mo or your liabilities and yung equity section ng iyong mga accounts. Now, pag sinabi nating income, or let's proceed with the definition, these are increase in economic benefit during the accounting period in the form of either an increase in asset or a decrease in liability that results in an increase in equity other than contributions from equity participant. Now, emphasize natin yung mga naka-highlight dito. Increase daw in, in economic benefits. So, sa operations mo, nadagdagan ang mga economic resources mo. At yung resulting effect nito sa iyong um, assets, liabilities, and equity section is either nadagdagan yung asset mo o kaya naman nabawasan ang iyong, equity, uh, ang iyong liability. 
and ang effect nito sa equity section ay madadagdagan naman. Thus, we have the proper arrows. Now, the income can be subclassified into two classes. Ito yung revenues and gains. So again, pag pinag-uusapan kasi natin na income, ito yung mga kita mo from your operations. Dahil, let's say, nagtayo ka ng negosyo para mag-provide ng service o kaya makapagbenta ng mga items. Bigyan na lang natin ng halimbawa, kung ikaw ay nagbabuy and sell ng mga cellphones, no? bibili ka ng cellphone para ibenta mo ito, yung mga benta mo, ito yung tinatawag natin na income accounts. Now, ang subclassification nakadepende sa klase ng, sa nature ng transaction na ito. Ito ba ay nangyayari in the ordinary course of business? Kapag sinabi natin na revenues, it arises in the ordinary course of business. Kapag gains naman, not in the ordinary course of business. Pero ano ba yung sinasabi natin na ordinary course of business? So, kung ano ang negosyo mo, ano yung purpose ng negosyo mo, ito yung ordinary course of business. So, sa example ko, kung, kung nagbabay and sell ka ng mga cellphones, yung mga kita mo from that transaction, kinaklasify kina, kina natin as revenues. Pero kung may mga iba kang tubo, pero hin, or, iba kang income, iba kang kita na hindi related doon sa um, pagbabay and sell mo ng mga cellphones, other gains yon or other income yon Ang tawag natin ay gains. So, kung halimbawa, um, binenta mo yung computer na ginagamit mo sa pagpo-provide ng mga uh, certain transactions sa company mo and kumita ka doon. So, ang tawag natin doon, gains. Okay? So, let us always remember na yung revenue accounts ay ginagamit para doon sa mga ordinary course of your business transactions. So, maliwanag po. That is your income account. Now, pag pinag-uusapan naman natin yung expense account, ito yung opposite ng income definition. Dito naman, oh, emphasize natin sa definition, ito naman yung decrease in economic benefits. Na ang result naman ay decrease in an asset o kaya increase in a liability. Na yung effect naman sa equity ay bababa. Kaya siya decrease in equity. Pero, other than distributions from equity participants. Okay? Thus, we have the arrows, no? In, uh, decrease in asset or increase in liability. Na ang net effect sa equity ay decrease. Okay? And it also includes losses. So, pag pinag-uusapan natin na expenses, ito yung mga gastusin mo. Nagbayad ka sa renta, rent expense. Nagbayad ka ng mga utilities, halimbawa sa tubig o sa kuryente, Meralco or sa Maynila, okay? Manila Water o kung ano pang mga, mga uh, utilities. Oh, that is an expense. Kailangan mo ng lawyer. Oh, that is a lawyer's fee. A professional fee. Pwede natin i-consider. O kung pinasahod mo yung iyong mga empleyado, we call it salaries. And other types of expenses. Kapag losses naman, it is not in the ordinary course of business. Uh, halimbawa, sa pagbebenta mo ng computer, talo ka. So, losses ang uh, ibig sabihin nito. So, that is the meaning of your expense account. Yung effects sa uh, assets, liabilities, and equity, we will be giving you an example or some examples on a separate episode para naman makita ninyo on a transactional basis kung paano naapektuhan ng income or ng expenses yung accounts ng assets, liabilities, and equity. So, paano ba nisasabi na kapag merong income, nag increase ang asset o kaya nag decrease yung liabilities? Or on the opposite part naman, kapag nagkaroon ka ng expenses, bababa either yung assets mo or tataas yung, yung mga liabilities. So, stay tuned para doon sa mga darating ka ng mga video uploads. O, recap lang ano, medyo mahaba yung ating episode for today. Your elements of your financial statements can be categorized into five and they are the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. So, wag din yung kakalimutan yung mga definitions nila. Although, 
para mas ma-appreciate ninyo ito, when we talked about the accounting cycle, magbibigay tayo ng mga examples para ma-emphasize yung effect sa mga accounts na ito. So, hanggang dito po yung ating session for today. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig at panunood. Kung mayroong kayong mga katanungan sa ating uh, pinag-usapan, don't forget to comment down below para masagot ko kayo. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga susunod kang uploads. Again, thank you and bye-bye!